So recently I've been playing around with LinkedIn's poll posts to do a bit of outreach for Google Sheets and Google Apps Scripts, you know, and Google Workspace as a whole. So what did I do first? Well, I jumped in and built a few questions to get started. And then I was hoping to send these questions out as a poll in LinkedIn. Then stupidly, I went to LinkedIn and added a poll only to realize that there is a certain character limit for both the question and then the answers for each. Here's my list of questions that I've pre-built and I know I've exceeded the maximum length for some of these and I'll have to update then and make some changes. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to get the length of all the characters in a cell and then we're going to apply some conditional formatting to help us see where we've exceeded that length and maybe even do a bit of data validation to stop us or warn us when we've exceeded that length. To play along, you can grab a copy of the starter sheet from the link in the description below. Let's dive in. So let's just grab the lengths across the top here. So we can easily grab the total number of characters or the length of each one of these cells here with the Google Sheets function len, L-E-N. From there, we can add in our text and then we close it up. Okay, we've got an auto suggestion to go all the way down to the bottom of our list. Yeah, sure, we'll handle that. And we can already see here this 142 has exceeded our maximum limit of 140 set by LinkedIn. Let's just put a header up here. Uh, we will call this Q. And then we'll go A1, A2, a3 for our answers. I'm just going to click on F2, hold shift down to F5 and drag it across. And then we can see a couple of other issues that arise here, but it's really hard for us to see. Now, one thing we could do is we could keep this here and it will help us identify the, the actual length. But if we have more than one answer or we want to extend our question out to the right so it covers up the entire screen, we're not going to be able to see this easily. So probably one of the best approaches we could use here is some conditional formatting to, to give us a color indication of when we've exceeded our maximum length. So let's just start off with the questions here. So I'm going to click on A2 and I'm gonna hit Shift and Control and then arrow down once and arrow down one more time. Actually, let's just drag it up so you can see from the sidebar. So I'm gonna go up to Format now and then Conditional Formatting. Now this automatically changes the color, but we're going to do something strange here. In our formatting rules, so we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and select custom formula is. So here, it, this allows us to add in a custom, custom formula, just like we did in our cells F2 through to I5. And indeed, we're going to be use, using the same len formula. So first we'll hit equals and type in len for our length. And then we're going to select the first value in this range here, this A2. So we'll select A2. Now we want to check if this A2 is greater than 140. So we can see here this A cell A3 is indeed greater than 140 with a character length of 142. So we need to put a warning indicator in here. Green is probably not the most efficient warning indicator for us. Let's go with a uh, light red berry three, sounds delicious. And we can select done. Now this is pretty good, but what about if we wanted some early warning to let us know that we're approaching this 140 characters as well. So what we could do is just click this add another rule. On this range, we'll scroll down and hit customer formula is, and let's drop it back to say if we reach 20 characters before the end, so 120. So we'll say equals len. And then we're going to use this top option here, this A2 to provide the sample of our formula. A2 is greater than 120. And let's just change this around. And we'll hit done. Now, if you are in the position where this A3 has just turned to orange as well as this A5 here, then it's likely that the order of your conditional formatting rules is out of whack. So if I just drag this up here, you can see now that the order of priority of our conditional formatting rules is now starting with our uh, length is greater than 120. We want this to be the second order of priority here underneath our red order of priority to be, to be the primary conditional formatting rules. So we'll put that one up at the top. Let's quickly do the same for B2 through to D 
5. I'm going to select B2, hold shift down and select D5 to get the range. Then we're going to select add another rule now. And you can see the range is already in there. Let's drop this all the way down to D1000. So I just clicked in there to make that change. So now we need to go down to custom formula is value of the formula. This time our formula error needs to occur at 30 characters. So equals len. And now up the top here, we've got B2 is our reference cell to, for our example formula here. So B2. And then we want it to be greater than 30 characters. It's going to generate a red just like before. So we'll go up here, get this berry three and select add another rule. And selecting add another rule will keep all the presets from the previous one. So it makes it incredibly efficient here. So let's just drop this one down to say 20 characters before for our warning here. You can see it's all in red now. So we're gonna change that now to our light orange here. So let's go up and select that light orange now. And we are good to go. So now let's select done and close. So now we can see just with our conditional formatting that our questions in A3 is too large and we'll need to rewrite that one. We're approaching 140 characters in A5, so we can't add anything else there. And then in B2 and C2, we've exceeded our maximum length of answers and so we're gonna to have to rewrite them. I also see a spelling mistake here in conditional. And then also in C4 and D4, we've exceeded our maximum length of 30 characters as well. We've, we're approaching our maximum length in D2 and also B and C5. All right, cool. One extra thing we could do perhaps is also provide some data validation. So we can do something similar here. So I'm gonna select this A2 range here and hold shift and control and down arrow twice to get the entire range. We'll head back up at the top so you can see what's going on. And then I'm gonna to go to data this time, data validation. And then we're going to add a rule. Now we're going to get these really ugly drop down menus. And so we need to change that. And to do that, we change the criteria here. And we're going to scroll down to, you guessed it, custom formula is. Now this time around, if I use the exact same formula as our conditional formatting, something weird's going to happen. So let me just show you. So equals len. And then we can use A2 as our example reference. It's always the one at the top left. And then if it is greater than 140, you can see in the top right hand corner here, everything gets an error. What's going on? Well, the question of, for the criteria is asked differently. It's actually asking the opposite. It's asking only show a warning if it doesn't meet this criteria. So let's change this around to greater than 140 and make it less than or equal to 140. Now our warning only appears here. We haven't rejected the input, we're just letting them know, we're letting the user know that we've reached 140 characters. Reason why I haven't rejected it is because uh, we may need to review and edit it later on, but we want to get the ideas or our thoughts out onto the cell while it's fresh in our minds. Unfortunately, one of the unavoidable pitfalls of these approaches is that you don't find out that you've exceeded your maximum length live. Indeed, the closest you'll get is with the data validation when you finish writing your text and at the end it'll show you a warning. And with the conditional formatting, once you hit enter or tabbed off the cell, then you'll get your color change. And of course, if you've assigned a length function uh, to that cell, then that cell will change once you've moved off that cell. The best option for this might be with some Google Apps Script where you could provide a dialogue box or modal box where you could input the cell and watch the update live. Let me know if you're interested in a tutorial on this in the comments below. Okay, so that's how to use the length function in Google Sheets to get the total character length of a cell. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, please hit that like button. And if you wanna see more tutorials like this, subscribe.